Preparing 3D Objects for Printing This 3D skills demonstration covers the whys and hows of readying digital objects for physical duplication. This lesson focuses on the stereolithography printing approach, but many of the topics discussed will also apply to other technologies as well. Most people can probably think of one or more somethings they would like to print in plastic or resin. As counterintuitive as it might sound, not every 3D model is suitable for 3D printing. Many of the objects found online are created for visualization, animation, VR, or gaming. Such models often have hidden gaps, unconnected geometries, or infinitely thin surfaces that would be impossible to print using modern manufacturing processes. For this lesson, we will assume that the viewer has already settled on one or more desired objects and that the models to be printed are both suitable and solid. Every 3D printing approach has its own way of applying successive layers of material to a build platform, and every 3D printer manufacturer has multiple tools for digitally slicing models and instructing their devices to physically reproduce those contours in the real world. The general term for these specialized programs is slicing software. Most of these applications can be freely obtained on manufacturers' websites and can correspond to specific printers or entire classes of fabrication devices. There is at least one such application for every 3D printer manufacturer on the market today. As you might imagine, that's way too many to demonstrate in this lesson. Fortunately, these programs often have many of the same essential features. This video demonstrates one such tool, the demonstration shown here uses Formlabs Preform software for use in that manufacturer's SLA-based 3D printers. After installation of the software and upon running the program for the first time, an option to select an active or virtual printer pops onto the screen. For the purpose of this video, let's assume that viewers following along will choose the virtual device option when creating a digital slice file. The first step at an empty build project scene is to open a previous project file or load a printable object using the file menu options or to simply drag an STL file to the 3D workspace. Not all slicer applications support desktop to workspace drag and drop operations, but Preform does. Depending on the design of the source 3D object file, the slicer software might prompt users to specify the size, scale, or placement options of the object to be added. These options are in millimeters or inches. I tend to select the smallest measurement option and then scale the object up later, if needed. Once an object has been placed on the virtual workspace, it can be, and frequently should be, repositioned. Most print preparation and slicing software allows for the translation or moving, rotation, and scaling of individual object files. As non-sentient devices and code, neither the printer nor the software cares how 3D objects are positioned. However, depending on the printing method, this detail could have major post-production labor implications. The method of structural support created for 3D models during the printing process affects cleanup operations after a print has finished. Also, due to physics realities and material science, design and orientation of a particular model determines where supports are needed most. All parts of a model need to be properly secured during printing to prevent shifting, detail problems, and failed prints. In this example of a scanned, sculpted, and printed head, SLA support scaffolds physically merge with the object at key points and do so using all of the same material, in this case, resin. It is difficult to remove such scaffolding from most models in a way that doesn't leave noticeable posts, burrs, or divots. When they do occur, repairing these imperfections can be time-consuming, especially for hard-to-reach or concave areas. Proper positioning is a subjective choice, and each model should be evaluated on its own terms. But when making these decisions, I consider what areas of the object are most important and which are the least. For a printed portrait like the one in this example, I consider the front, or the face, to be the most important, while the back, or the hair, is least important. In this case, it is tempting to simply rotate the head model backward, facing straight up, to keep all of the supports at the back. For this model, that is a perfectly valid choice. 
However, for a model with exposed ears, this positioning would place scaffold arms directly beneath the two thinnest and most delicate parts of the model. In that situation, I would instead prefer to tilt the head back at a roughly 45 degree angle to allow the earlobes to provide some additional natural support. Sometimes, however, practical matters and human limitations dictate how certain models should be arranged on a virtual build platform. With a many-tentacled squid example like the one shown here, the important detail elements are all in the face and head area. Normally, someone might want to avoid putting support arms on those surfaces, but with this squid, all of the tentacles are thin and will be very delicate. Orienting the object in any way that interweaves scaffolds with those fragile surfaces is probably a bad idea. If, on the other hand, we flip the squid upside down, the natural flow of the sculpted geometry provides some of the model's own support. Removing scaffolds from the convex head area, while difficult, is still less likely to end in part breakage. Most 3D print preparation and slicer software offer an automated support structure creation option, and some allow users to manually position each individual scaffold arm. Automated support creation also builds a customized disposable platform or raft to connect the supports together and securely bind the entire model to a printer's build plate. In addition to one and done singletons, multiple objects can also be arranged onto virtual build platforms for most printers. This can be an efficient way to print a lot of objects at the same time. However, this approach doesn't greatly improve overall production speed for sets of models. Also note that each additional part of an eclectic group will likely still need its own positional and support settings. Generally speaking, the larger the object, or the more objects, that will be on the build platform, the longer the job will take. In addition, the taller the objects are on the z-axis, the more printing time will be required. Also, the resolution of the print matters as well. Higher detail means more layers printed closer together, and that means longer print times. Many 3D print preparation and slicer applications offer a way for users to check the printability of a model, plot the print duration, estimate the material required, and to view a simulated representation of a print job at various stages of completion. Once a printable object project has been added, positioned, supported, and evaluated, it can then be sent to the printer via cable or saved to a file for transfer on a portable storage device. SLA and MSLA printers build successive layers of material differently from FDM, LOM, SLS, and PolyJet printers. Some approaches allow for multiple materials in the same print. Some require nozzle temperature and feed speed settings. Others allow for hollow models, thin shells, and patterned interior supports. Feel free to try out other slicer software and compare and contrast their features. Future videos in this series will address some of these additional options. That's it for this exploration of 3D object print preparation for SLA and MSLA devices. Have fun importing, positioning, supporting, and slicing your own projects.